is adorable? It's fine. I said that when I was a little girl. Hello everybody, welcome back to Wainwright Road. This is Marjorie Cook and today we are going to tackle this roll top desk. I found this on Facebook Marketplace for a total of $15. We went ahead and paid $20 because ATMs don't give out fives or tens. And um, yeah, so $20 bucks and it was worth every penny. It's actually child sized, which I couldn't tell from the picture. I knew it was small, but it, it's actually a funny story. I didn't realize it was child sized until like day two of this project when I was sitting on the floor and realized, wow, this is going to be a really small chair. So yeah, it's a kid sized desk. And um, when my mom came out and, and saw what I was doing, she just went gaga because she had one when she was a kid. And, you know, I love it when she has little sparks of recall like that with her Alzheimer's. But anyway, as you can see, it is old. It is decrepit. This roll top is in three pieces. It is dirty. And I've already taken the two side drawers out. They're in my workshop when we're going to do those first. I thought I was going to have to sand this thing down to bare wood and just like start from scratch but I was able to restore it pretty quickly and um, we're going to get started with that but as you can see it's going to need some TLC so let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do is give it a good cleaning with some cred cutter. It is my go-to for cleaning things that have been stored outside because it will take off just about anything and I really just wanted to see what condition the wood was in under all that grime. I was so pleasantly surprised because really it was just dirty. It just needed to have all of that crap taken off of it. The sides were not wood grain. They had been painted with um you know just made to look like wood and you know we all do that in our crafting too but I didn't want that for this piece so I do eventually you know in a moment I'll paint over that but right now I'm just giving it a good bath and you can already see that beautiful finish coming through on the front of this drawer it is just cleaning up beautifully and I am literally tickled to death look at that it's gorgeous so now we're doing a light sand and I do this very light sand over the entire piece to give the polycrylic something to stick to I polycrylic the drawers only because they're going to be you know if it's used by my grandchildren the drawers are going to be getting a lot of tough love I'm sure pulling crayons and crayon books out um, I decided not to polycrylic the entire um, thing I'm just going to oil it up real good so the inside is getting this really pretty chalky blue. This is um, the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in, yeah, whatever that blue Rust-Oleum chalk paint is. I'll have to list that in the description because, you know what, I'm tired and I'm not going to get up and go look it up, but it's the pre-mixed blue Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the can. And um, gosh, it's just a really gorgeous color. I hit it with the blow dryer a little bit for the second coat. And here's where you can decide too whether or not you want to have a distressed look. Um, if I were to leave it with just this one coat, this is what I call a country coat where the colors can show through from underneath. I have some doors in my home that are in a country coat, but for this piece I wanted it to be good and solid. So you can see how beautifully that it is. It is laying in there in that drawer and just cleaning it up and making it beautiful. Um, I do polycrylic the inside of the drawers as well. I go ahead and hit the top edges and the outside of the drawer with my detail sander um, just because it was it was pretty rough it had been beaten up over the years that drive by there <laughs> was me showing off my Waverly ink chalk paint which is the color that I did use and then for the top edge you know I tried this technique just so that I wouldn't have to worry about you know getting it over the edge just putting it on like stain didn't really love the technique. I go back to using a brush and just being super careful with um, the rest of the coats and with the other drawer. But, you know, it's always an option if that's how you want to do it because I didn't put any on that front lip. It's just the sides. And then, of course, hit it with the blow dryer in between 
and it dries super quick. I left the footage in of doing the panels on the side and the back because how oddly satisfying is it to watch, watch it go from wet to dry and it's like it goes from shiny to matte. I just love that. I thought you might like it too. So that's coming up here in a second. And I did all of the edges and then I did the sides, the back and the bottom in the black chalk paint. You can do whatever color you like. I actually thought about doing a wallpaper on the sides, like a floral or something, so that it was just a pop of color when the drawers do come out. I may still go back and do that. I don't know. I've seen the technique done. I've seen drawers lined with, you know, wallpapers and specialty papers. And it's always an option that I can go back and do. In fact, the main drawer, the, the middle drawer in the front, I didn't do anything to the inside of that drawer yet because I'm still debating whether or not I want to line that with paper. But here we go. Um, had a little, you know, it's there. And I just love watching it just dry super fast. So there we go. And then I'm going to completely cover this entire drawer with some polycrylic hit a little spot that I missed and oh my gosh it's just coming out beautiful did anybody see Danny K poking his head in there through the the screen door yeah that huge rip in the screen door totally his fault he he ripped it out one night when he got locked in there by mistake oh look at that missed an entire row of red can't have that red stripe there Anyway, we live on a main road, and so um, Danny is a totally indoor cat. That screen door leads to a garage that he plays in if the door is closed. And you can see, yeah, hit it with the brush. Didn't really like the edges there. Thought it would look better with the brush. Hi, baby. At least I didn't touch you. <laughs> I heard the door. You still don't. Mm. I thought this was going to get so nice over. All I'm doing is cleaning it. It's like I'm painting it with cord cutter. It's wood grain everywhere. Like this mm -hmm. turns into this. Watch this. It's magic. <laughs> it's just dirty. filming your back right now. Oh, <laughs> sorry guys. Hi. <laughs> it's literally just dirty. And it needs a coat of varnish. I'm going to get you into all these little cracks and get all the crap out. This is a steal. Yeah, I don't feel bad about giving her that extra five, huh? Nope. <sighs> Did you sleep well, my darling? Uh, but anything with your eyes closed and at burn in the background is restful. Yeah. Okay, so that was a tiny look into a day in the life of home time and a trucker's wife. I am cleaning the roll top with a toothbrush. That was Becky's idea and um, got it nice and clean and getting ready to put it back together. Um, it was it was cruddy and I'm sorry that you couldn't see a lot of that footage because of you know Becky's back but you know Becky's back so <laughs> that's what we do and you can see the wood grain just really starting to sparkle through um, I did include this footage of Becky cleaning her truck though because you know I have to give her a shout out without her doing what she does I can't do what I do and the the furniture is a side hustle the crafting is a side hustle she makes it possible for me to take care of my mom and to be there for my family, which is the most important thing. So I love you, babe. All right, so let's talk about roll tops. Roll tops are made up of individual slatted pieces and this one was in three pieces. Now I'm lucky, sometimes they come in there in like 25 pieces. So this one slat needed to be reattached and this is actually double time speed. Um, but you can see behind the slats is this piece of muslin and it's it's like a canvas it's a pretty decent piece of, of material there you can replace that with any other decent piece of canvas if you need to um, it doesn't have to be pretty um, this one was in fairly good shape it was just that the slats had come off of it all i did was glue the slats back on i used regular <laughs> regular I, I used regular hot glue for this I didn't use any special kind of hot glue 
you could use fabric hot glue you could use the really good gorilla hot glue but I just used regular because this desk isn't going to be used every day and then you just press it back on this particular part of the video is actually in real time you know so it's it's not a very time consuming procedure unless you have to do the entire roll top another significant thing to notice here is that it doesn't run very smoothly at all do you have any WD-40? yeah I need to squirt some in here I think Okay, so all that, you know, mushy stuff earlier, <laughs> when it comes right down to it, my girl is a geek. Come here, woman. What the, <laughs> what the heck was that about? So I'm just taking this WD-40, which is actually, from what I understand, it's like fish oil. And I squirted that into the runner, the little groove where all the slats go through. And after working it in for a while and spraying it directly where it needed it, and finding a nail in the back that was kind of blocking the progress of the slats, I was able to um, fix this to the point that you could raise and lower that roll top with one finger on each handle. It was pretty brilliant and it works like a charm now. If I were a quote unquote real woodworker, if I had all the right tools, if I had all the right equipment, which is my dream someday, I would have completely disassembled this desk and I would have put this desktop portion back together in such a way that the crevices I'm filling with this wood powder filler, it would, they would no longer exist. But I don't have that kind of workshop. So I use this powder where you add water and you can mix up this wood filler in the amounts that you need and the consistency you need to fill the grooves that formed when the wood slats that made up this desktop had begun to come apart. After it dries, you sand off the remaining amount and it recesses a little bit, it dries and shrinks. So I'm doing a second coat of the product and you can see here where it's a powder. I'm adding water, I'm using a small paint stick, basically a large craft stick to, to stir it up until I get the consistency that I want. And then I will start um, just kind of forcing it in almost like grout into these cracks. If I had to do this over again, I would have used a different product. I was under the impression this product would take a stain. It did not. So the final product looks like shiplap on one half <laughs> and not shiplap on the other, which I suppose adds a little character to it. But if I had my druthers, I wanted it to blend really nicely and it does not. So again, if I had it to do over, I probably would have gone back to my standby for filling cracks like this, which is wood glue and sawdust. You mix up your own filler and it takes paint and it takes stain beautifully. That's what I should have done. No, no, I think this was factory built. These, okay, these, these two details look at it. Even though I'm an adult now, it seemed that mine was shorter than that. All right, I'm going to go get the pizza pie. Okay. I really do. I think mine was... There were two drawers, but they were just... They were smaller drawers. And a little bit lower. Because I was really little. I was like... So let's talk about this drawer. It was warped. It was very thin, cheap wood. It, the wood did not match the rest of the project, so I did rip it off and I'm going to cut new wood. You'll see the piece that I choose. It's very similar to whatever replaced the original wood to begin with. I am using tight bond glue here. Um, I'll put a, a picture on the screen of what the bottle looks like to put the drawer back together. The 
the tray down here, the blue red tray with the piercing yes. on it. Where'd you get that? Um, we picked that up at a yard sale. You wanted the lid. I'm going to clean that up and make a wall hanging for you. Okay, okay, because I was going to say that was so familiar. <laughs> like, but I couldn't place it really, so it's not a family heirloom. No, no. And then, once that's dry, I think I can make, yeah, I can make a new drawer front out of this piece of wood. And you'll never know the difference. Originally, I had not planned to put a new coat of stain on this piece. Well, originally I had. I thought I was going to have to sand it all the way down to bare wood. But when it cleaned up so nicely, I was just going to leave whatever finish was still on. I did do the wood filling and as you can see, uh, you, can, you can still see where the, the wood had come apart. And because of that, because I had to sand off that um, wood filler, I decided that I would go ahead and just put a coat of wax over the, in, or not wax, but stain, over the entire exterior. And I'm glad that I did because it really freshened it up, it made it look nice and shiny and new but this this wood filler dries um, and sands off quite easily once it once it's dried I couldn't get my detail sander underneath those shelves which I'm sure if I'd worked really hard I could have removed them um, but I'm, I'm leaving them distressed and so I, I didn't bother but I got in there with you know a little piece of, of sandpaper and and it came off quite easily and once everything was smooth, I hit it with the Minwax um, Early American is the color of stain that I prefer. And I just kind of touched everything up. And again, professional woodworkers, people that do this all the time, probably would do this in proper stages. I ended up doing sections at a time. So while I'm staining the surface of this desktop because I've just finished sanding, I still have not crud cuttered and cleaned all of the sides. The other reason that I decided to put a new coat of stain is there on the side that I'm working on right now, you could see some drips that were from the fish oil or the WD-40 that I used and, and this blended them in quite nicely. So here I am taking off the form that I created when I glued the legs back together. The pegs were coming out where the drawers met the rails and so I created just using a couple of little pieces of wood and some duct tape some really nice straps because I didn't have clamps big enough to hold that together. I put some tight bond into the joints, wrapped it up with duct tape overnight and I think it was overnight. Yeah, it was It was mostly overnight, although this particular footage right here is shot about three o'clock in the morning because I couldn't sleep. So, I did go to bed. I did not get a good night's rest. And then the next day, we build. And good morning. It is time to build us a drawer. Now, <laughs> this was not the first thing that I did that day. The first thing that I did when it came to refinishing this beautiful, almost 100-year-old child's desk was fix that handheld skill saw that you see me using. I've only had it for one blade's worth, basically. I used the blade that it came with, and the first time I changed the blade, it never worked again. And so the first two hours of working on this project consisted of standing over my phone looking for YouTube videos about how to fix this thing. And I couldn't find one. I literally could not find one. And so <laughs> I'm probably going to make that video. But I, I ended up jerry-rigging it because basically what happened was I was missing a piece, I think. The blade was wobbling and so it was binding in the wood and it would stop spinning every time it came into contact with wood. So I had to put something in there. I used a little tiny piece of the sandpaper that comes for my, my sander that you just saw me using. And I used a, a little square of it that, you know, usually comes at the end of the adhesive pad. So it had felt on one side and sandpaper on the other. I put the felt side next to the blade, 
with a little hole in the center to put over the screw I used it basically like a washer and that put just enough torque on it to hold that blade steady and, and then I could use it so you can see I cut a piece of the um, really thin plywood to the same shape as the original drawer front and I sanded it smooth here I am sanding where I'm going to attach it I attached it using tight bond um, and hot glue and I let it sit for you know several hours tight bond is actually a great wood glue for these types of projects because it will set up in about two hours you can do pretty much anything if you put torque on it and pull it apart it's gonna come apart it's just not that kind of wood glue but you know it's gonna hold its own um, for the purposes intended so once I got that stained and the stain had dried enough I went ahead and attached it to the face of the drawer on the the edges there and then um, let the glue set up a little bit uh, washed away the extra with water it's a, it's a water soluble glue which is great and then I just used little teeny tiny penny nails to give it some more um, durability and sturdiness there's the old drawer there's the new drawer okay so I'm back um, I gave it some thought I had some pancit some beautiful Filipino food and I'm going to try to recreate the wooden handles using these now they're not gonna be identical of course they're gonna be a little bit different but I'm gonna try to get the bubbles in there and if that works good enough then that's what I will attach to the drawer and if it doesn't if I'm not satisfied with it with the recreation then I will go ahead and use the porcelain Guys, seriously, I've never woodworked before in my life and I made this. Look at this. It's got the bevel in it, like right there. Just like the drawer right here, right there. So this is the drawer, that's the top. And this is the piece that I made out of garden steak. And it goes all about like that line it up that is a pretty good replication I have never done this in my life I've never woodworked I've never like taken something from scratch and made it I've restored and I've like polished but I've never cut something up and done this I'm so excited this goes out to with design to the nines miss Natalie I feel powerful yay I'm sure it's a different kind of wood so it may take the stain differently so we're gonna have to see oh and look it still has like nicks in it because you know what I ain't perfect and it's definitely taking this day differently well that's a bummer so we're going to let that dry in maybe we'll sand it a little bit more too Let's talk about what I don't like about the handle. I don't like that the color tone doesn't match when I stain it. I don't like that it's not perfect, that it's a little bit lumpy on the inside because I don't have one of the planers or I don't have the scraping wood, 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 can't talk, woodworking tools. I do like that I made it myself and that it's one of the first pieces that I've ever made. And I am proud of myself for having made the effort. And this is a toy desk, so I think in the end, it's gonna work out. It's the first ever piece that I made, and I'm keeping it. We need to install this little sucker. It's gonna go right here. And I'm gonna cheat. Now, normally I would screw from the back. Hi, I don't have any screws that are short enough, so I'm just gonna hot glue it on there for now, because I can. And, you know, when I get some screws, I'll put it on for real. But this is not going to be a working desk. This is going to be a look-at toy. And so I'm not worried about it having heavy use or anything like that. My grandchildren are coming in about a month. I'll have it screwed in before they get here. So I'm going to put this on the ends like so. I'm just going to spread it. 
And I'm going to put hot glue in the middle for that instant bond. Because, you know, we are DIY crafters. We like our instant bond. So I'm going to put it like so. Just like so. Look at that. I'm not going to lie. I'm happy as a clam with this. I am thrilled with this little handle. And I am generally speaking more of a porcelain handle kind of girl. So the only thing left to do on this particular piece was to replace the back. I had pulled the original back off. It was waterlogged and warped. I thought about pressing it back together and thought, why bother? I had a piece of plywood that would work for it. It had some beautiful knots in it. I stained it to match and attached it with the original sized nails and I think it came out great. So once the back was done, then we were ready for the rest of the, um, yeah, no, we weren't ready for the rest of anything. We were done. Yeah, that was it. I was just thinking to myself, I need to put in the rest of the pictures. So let's do that. I'm going to put together uh, photographs of everything that, would, um, of all the different angles and I uh, hope you enjoy it. So thank you. Thank you very much for stopping by Wayne Wright Road. This is a longer video than I told myself I will produce, but this was a bigger project. So um, in keeping with, you know, the, the shorter, um, the shorter videos that are supposed to be, you know, the wave of the future. I'm only going to be doing one project per video from now on, even if that means the video is only six minutes long, because it's just going to be one DIY. Um, this, this was one DIY, but this was a four day project. It was a lot of elbow grease. It was a lot of love. And I think it came out absolutely fantastic. So thanks again for dropping by. If you like what you see, if the kind of content I create is something that you do want to see often, please subscribe. Otherwise, hit that like button, share this with your friends. I am trying to build a, a channel here that will be successful and will help bring that trucker lady home for good. So thanks again and y'all have a great day. So the drawer, as I'm cleaning it here, talking with my mom about her childhood, and of course, you know, we're going to have the tornado siren test right now, every day at 12 minutes past noon.